Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel if you don't know me and today I'm gonna to be talking about my top five wedding regrets as well as my top five best investments. So hopefully this will help you out if you are in the middle of planning your wedding or if you're just interested to hear about my wedding regrets. If you've just stumbled across this video, I am currently filming a week's worth of wedding related videos so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out but I'll make sure to link some of my other wedding videos down below as well as our wedding playlist which should include pretty much all of our wedding related like wedding planning kind of vlogs. To be completely honest, I don't regret anything about my wedding day. If I were to go back and do it again, I would do it exactly the same way. It was genuinely the best day of my life, the happiest day of my life, and I am so happy with how everything turned out. I don't know, if I could go give myself advice, I would probably say these things. So my first regret, and probably my main regret, even though I didn't really have a lot of control over this, was getting married during a pandemic. So Liam and I got engaged in March 2020, and it was literally the week before all the restrictions started to come in. So obviously we had no idea about what was to come and how much COVID was gonna impact our engagement season and engagement period of time. In saying that, I am so thankful that we even got to have our wedding day. I know so many brides that had to reschedule or cancel or postpone or something to their wedding day, and my heart goes out to you because that just sucks so much and we were so blessed with being able to still have our wedding day on our original date and be able to have most of our friends and family there and all of those sort of things but the main reason why this is like my biggest regret is because firstly it just caused so much extra stress my vendors and I were emailing back and forth the entire like 10 months of our engagement just being kind of like okay well what's plan B what's plan C what are we gonna do if this happens what are we gonna do if that happens and that was definitely just a level of stress that we did not need. And the second reason why it's at the top of my regrets list is because we weren't actually able to have all of our family there due to border restrictions and traveling situations. And that just breaks my heart thinking about it. I wasn't able to have my grandparents there. I wasn't able to have a lot of my extended family there. And Liam wasn't able to have some of his family there. And that is just such a hard decision to make and such a sacrifice that you have to make getting married during a pandemic. Um, obviously we wanted to stick to restrictions and honor those and stay safe, but it did just make the process a really heartbreaking experience. Number two is definitely completely on me and it was waiting too long to book a florist. Booking a florist was one of the most stressful parts about our wedding because for some reason, I just found it so hard to even get a florist to respond to me. I sent out like 20 emails trying to get quotes and prices and just seeing if they were available and I got maybe three responses and one of those florists said they couldn't and two of them said yes but then one of them didn't respond past that point and ended up replying after my wedding being like yeah we can do it and I was like did you not look at the date like it was two weeks ago <laughs> and the only one left that did say yes was like the only one I obviously had to go with and she was great and I'm happy that we went with her but it was just such a stressful period so it was a mix of florists not getting back to me as well as me leaving it a little bit too late and that just created a lot of stress so don't do that. I would recommend booking your florist as one of your first things. For me, flowers wasn't one of my main things, so it wasn't as much of a concern, but if you are very particular about what you want, I would definitely get in quick. Number three is just something that kind of went wrong. At our reception, we had a little guest book and we had a Polaroid camera and pens and stuff so people could take a photo tape it into our guest book and write a little note. And really early into our reception, our Polaroid camera broke. And I don't think it was anyone's fault. I don't even know what happened to it, but it broke and we didn't have a backup. And I should have brought a backup. That was just, I guess, my mistake. You just don't expect those sort of things to happen, but we only got to have like five Polaroid photos in our guest book. And obviously that wasn't quite the plan. Honestly, not the biggest deal. And having that be the worst thing that happened on our wedding day, I'm really not upset about it at all. We are so blessed. But my advice for you would be if you are having something like a Polaroid photo book, or maybe even if you're playing your own music off some speakers or someone's laptop or anything like that, just make sure you bring backups in case something goes wrong. For me, I have so many friends who have Polaroid cameras. I should have asked one of them to bring a backup or even just to have two available, but you win some, you lose some and we just didn't think of that at the time. Number four is I definitely waited way too long to get my wedding dress. We had a 10 month engagement and I started looking for my dress maybe like seven months out, but I only found the dress that I wanted six months out from our wedding. And the place that I was shopping through and the type of dress that I wanted 
took six months to be made because they only make them to order since they are such expensive pieces. So that caused a little bit more stress than it needed to because the dress shop where I was getting it from had to like call the dressmaker and make sure that I was kind of prioritized so that my dress would definitely make it in time and they couldn't really promise that it would make it in time so it was just a little bit scary. Obviously it depends how you're getting your dress, like if you're getting it made you may need to work out how much time that's going to cost you to get it made but if you're buying it off the rack or anything like that then maybe you don't need that much time. Everything did end up coming in in time which I'm so thankful for and my alteration lady was incredible and I did get to pick it up like three days before my wedding or something but everything was fine. We're all good. Everything turned out well. But if you're getting your dress made or like ordered in, I personally would probably give it eight to nine months. I think that's like the perfect time because it's not too close that you'll be pushing it, but it's not so far out that you might change your mind in between that time. Because I have also heard of girls getting their dress like a year and a half to two years before their actual wedding. And by the time their wedding comes, they pretty much hate it because they've just like stared at it for too long. So my advice would be like eight to nine months. Number five and the last like official regret. I hate saying regret because I honestly wouldn't really change anything, but just something to keep in mind when you're planning your wedding and maybe that we didn't do the smartest way was having our wedding so close to the beginning of the year. I honestly did not think about this at all when we booked our wedding, but so many florists, cake makers, photographers, just vendors, in general take time off over Christmas and New Year's so if you have a wedding in the early part of the year some of them are just on holidays and they're not gonna be available we got married on the 16th of January and that ended up being okay the only problem we really had was cake makers. There were only a few that were going to deliver to our venue. And I think two out of the three that I contacted were on holidays during that time. So I literally had to go with our only option left who was available. And it ended up being a beautiful cake and I'm so glad we went with them. But it just doesn't feel great to know that you're very limited with your options. And if you're very particular about a certain thing, you might not get exactly what you want. So I would just say keep in mind like public holidays and very popular holiday times to make sure that all of your guests can come and they haven't booked holidays previously and all of your vendors will be available as well. And the other thing about getting married in early January is because it is so hot, the florist that we went with was very clear with me that she would not be able to get like just any type of flower or even if she could get it, it wouldn't last in a bouquet all day. So she was a little bit more limited with the types of flowers that she'd be able to provide because it was so hot and they'd wilt and just not look cute by the time the photos would come. I'm really glad she had that conversation with me and was basically like, I may not be able to get your flowers exactly like your inspiration pictures, but I'll do the best I can. And I was like, that is totally fine. Flowers were not a super important thing for me personally. I literally just said, as long as it's just white and green, I don't really care what you do. And this is actually a good tip if you're doing a summer wedding. She ended up doing a mixture of dry and fresh flowers so that she could have beautiful fresh flowers and fresh greenery but kind of bulk it up a little bit more with some dried flowers to make sure it would last the whole day. And previously to seeing her do that, I had never even considered that as an option, but it was really fun to have a mix between fresh and dried flowers and I really love how they turned out. Moving on to my best five investments. So these are just things that I'm so glad we did or that I'm just really glad that we spent the money on. And number one is investing a lot of money into our venue. Our venue was definitely the most expensive part of our wedding, but in saying that it was extremely inclusive so it had just so much included in the wedding package and I'm so glad we did things that way This is definitely just personal preference do whatever you want on your own wedding day But Liam and I really didn't like the idea of spending the day before the wedding setting up And then the day after getting our friends and family to pack it up while we went on our honeymoon that just did not sound good to us. So we decided to go with a really inclusive venue and I am so glad that we did. Yes, it definitely was a big expense, but also in saying that, if you end up doing it the other route where you kind of hire the venue and then hire the tables, hire the chairs, hire the caterers, hire all the cutlery, the plates, the glasses, the waitresses, the bar staff, the drinks, like all of that, that will definitely add up as well. But depending on how you do it, I don't actually think it's like dramatically cheaper to do it that way compared to just going with an inclusive venue. I may be wrong, but that's just what I've gathered from weddings that I've seen. Just remember that if you are bringing everything in, like bringing in tables, bringing in chairs, bringing in dance floors, bringing in cutlery, all of those sort of things, you are the one who has to coordinate all of that either the day before or the day of. And that is a lot of like extra pressure that you either need to delegate to someone else or do yourself. And 
for me personally, that was not something I wanted to deal with. If you love that sort of stuff, obviously go ahead and do it, but I just didn't want to deal with all of that. So I'm really glad we went with the venue that we went with. If you're wondering, we got married at Summer Grove Estate in New South Wales. Number two was a wedding coordinator. So we didn't have a wedding planner. We did all of that ourselves, but we did have a day of wedding coordinator and she was absolutely incredible. She did so much and definitely made the day run much more smoothly than it would have without her. She was included in our venue package and I probably wouldn't have even thought to get a wedding coordinator if she wasn't included in our venue. But if I'm going to give you any advice, it would be have a day of wedding coordinator. She wrote up a little timesheet that we followed that day and she made sure that everyone stuck to it. She called all of my vendors to make sure they knew what the time schedule was. She handled all the florals when they got delivered on the day. She handled the wedding cake and made sure that was put in a cold room. She made sure the boys were getting ready and put on all their buttonholes because they didn't know what they were doing. She fixed my train of my dress before every single photo. She was like behind the scenes in pretty much like every photo making sure that everything was running perfectly. She was also the one who made sure I walked down the aisle at the exact perfect time to make the song like flow. She did so much. I could sit here for an hour and talk about all of the things that she did that made our day better but I just could not recommend that enough. Number three was a gelato stand. So we hired a company called Wheel and Spoon and they're just like a, I don't really know what to call it. It looks like a bike with a little, I don't know, like trailer on the back of it that's full of gelato. I'll insert photos from our wedding, but we hired Wheel and Spoon to come and serve gelato during our cocktail hour. So after the ceremony, when everyone went to go get a drink and some canapes, they could also get some gelato. And having that as an option for a summer wedding was probably one of the best decisions we made. It was so good. After the wedding, when we caught up with friends and family, one of the most common things that people said was, oh my gosh, that gelato was so good. And I feel like just having something fun for people during the cocktail hour or maybe during dancing or during, you know, that kind of like free time that people have is such a great idea. It definitely was a bit more of an expensive thing to do, but it was so worth it. I'm not saying you have to do a gelato stand, but there are so many things that you could do just to make your guests have a little bit more fun. I've seen people do like ice cream trucks that come into the venue, which is so fun. Some people have donut walls, some people have jumping castles, lawn games are always really fun. Just something that makes your guests experience a little bit better, I think is just such a great idea. Number four is having a small bridal party. I am so glad we had a small bridal party. Although I have so many friends that I absolutely love and could definitely see standing beside me on my wedding day, having only a couple people to coordinate with and figure out dresses and shoes and all that sort of stuff with just lifted a huge weight off my shoulders. So if you don't know, I had one maid of honor and one bridesmaid and Liam had one best man and one groomsman. And that was just the perfect amount for us. Both of us are more introverted, more shy people. So it was just a lot less overwhelming for us to have a smaller bridal party. And I just don't think there's anything wrong with either having a small bridal party, maybe even not having any bridal party. Whatever you want to do, do it. If you want to have 10 bridesmaids, do it. It's totally up to you. But I'm just really happy with how we did it. And it also can save you a lot of money because the more bridesmaids you have, the more you have to pay for, unless you want them to pay for everything themselves. And for me personally, I just didn't feel comfortable comfortable asking someone to be my bridesmaid and then also ask them to pay for dress, shoes, hair, makeup, jewelry, accommodation, like all of that sort of stuff. It just didn't feel quite right to me. Again, personal preference, do whatever you want. But because I only had two bridesmaids, I was able to ask them to pay for their dress and then I paid for everything else. And it meant that when I bought them pajamas, I could get them really nice quality pajamas. I could get them nice quality jewelry. I could get their makeup professionally done and it didn't cost me like thousands and thousands of dollars. So that's also definitely an advantage of having a smaller bridal party. And my number five best investment was not spending a lot of money on decor. I've never really like crunched the numbers officially for how much we spent total on our decor, but I would say it would be around three to four hundred dollars, which is honestly not a lot when it comes to wedding decor. Let me just give you an example. One of my first ideas was to have greenery come all the way down the center of the tables in our reception. So the three main tables where the guests were sitting, I wanted like greenery all down there. Those tables were, I think 10 meters long. And when I got quotes for that, I think it was gonna cost me over a thousand dollars just for that. So to get leaves put on a table, it was gonna cost me over a thousand dollars. And don't get me wrong, it would have looked 
absolutely stunning and that definitely isn't a ridiculous amount of money for like 30 meters of greenery. Florists work very hard, I am not saying they don't, but that is just a lot of money to spend on something that people simply just look at. So instead I went to Spotlight, I went to the clearance section, I bought white curtain material and I made my own table runners for the tables. I think that cost me about $100 for all of that material, like 30 plus meters of material. Then I just bought some tea lights, very inexpensive, and I went to a thrift store and bought a lot of mismatched glasses and put the tea lights in those. And then I also borrowed some pillar candles from my friend who had gotten married a year earlier, so those were free. And that was all of the decor for my reception. That was literally it. I made my own wooden signs, just got wood from Bunnings, drew on them myself, all of that sort of stuff. It was a very simple design, don't get me wrong, but that was also the style we wanted for our wedding. It was very minimal, very simple, very clean looking because that just suits our personalities. I have seen so many weddings where they've got so much going on, so many flowers, and it looks absolutely stunning. But truth be told, that would have cost an arm and a leg. So choose where you want to invest your money. We chose to invest in the venue, invest in the food, invest in the drinks. We didn't choose to invest in our decor, and I'm really glad we did that because I would rather people have a good meal and a good experience then look at something pretty that's gonna get thrown out a day later. Again, personal preference. Do whatever you want, but that's just the way I see it and I'm really glad we did it that way. But honestly, at the end of the day, your wedding is all about you marrying your best friend and if that is the only thing that goes right that day, I'm sure it'll still be the best day of your life. I hope you all have a great day. Let me know if you have any other questions and I'll try and answer them in the comments as well. And I'll see you guys in my next video very soon. Goodbye.